we're gonna talk about cloud code planning mode. It feels clunky, right? You can't save your plans to a file by default and you get stuck in that awkward choice between continue or say no, and half the time you lose your planning context anyway. But here's the thing, while you're fighting with plan mode, pro engineers have moved to a completely different approach that just works better. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Natalie, a professional software engineer, and in my free time, I enjoy exploring vibe coding. In case you're not familiar, planning mode is something that's built into cloud code. You can get into it by hitting ship tab twice, while markdown planning uses external files like plan.md. While planning mode can work really well for small one-shot problems and bug fixes, it can be really cumbersome to repeatedly tell Claude to stay on plan after every single interaction and tool approval. There's also the persistence issue. There's not a single complex feature you will get to fit in Claude's context window before it auto compacts. And while creating planning files might be slower than using plan mode with auto approve, it will actually be better in the long run for the quality of your code and the quality of your app. Let's talk about the main concepts. Here are the main characteristics of plan mode. It's ephemeral, in session only, read only sandbox for deliberation. The plan does not persist anywhere other than Claude's context. From my own experience and my research, I see people using this for smaller things, no matter how small, even if you want to add a button or write a unit test. If it's a small task you can complete in the next 30 minutes, that is what plan mode is for. And of course it has its limitations. The binary choice between implement the plan and no, don't implement the plan can lead to premature execution. Markdown file planning, on the other hand, persistent, portable, and version controlled. In case you decide to move off of cloud code, go to Gemini, Chat GPT, or another AI that comes along in a year or two, you will still have your context and you will still have your plan. If you're using Gemini CLI as a project manager in cloud code, which by the way, I have a video on right here, you run out of your free 100 requests per day and decide to go to the Gemini UI, you can take your plan and refine it using Gemini Pro 2.5 which has a much larger context window than cloud code. You can also take the plan files you create to your team, to your users and get feedback. Here I have a simple cloud code resource tracker, which is basically just a table of these resources with links. I collected these using cloud research and it's been really interesting reading through all of them. What if I wanted to export them as a CSV and import them elsewhere? So let's add a CSV export functionality to this resource tracker. So we're gonna start up Claude. We'll run slash init to initialize a new CloudMD file with code base documentation. Okay, and here we go. We've got a Claude.md file that provides essential guidance for future cloud instances working on this code base. The file includes essential commands for development, building, and code quality checks, high level architecture focusing on component structure, data flow styling approach that requires understanding multiple files. Let's take a look. Pretty good, not too long. So I also like adding Gemini CLI as a project manager to my Claude.md files. And I just did this by running my custom slash command, which is slash add Gemini. It looks like this. If you want to learn how to make custom slash commands, there's a video up here. If you want to know more about using Gemini CLI inside of Cloud Code, here's another video. And a quick overview of what it did. It added a section called Extended Analysis with Gemini CLI, and it has a bunch of Gemini CLI examples so that Cloud Code knows exactly how to run the Gemini CLI and when. For example, when analyzing the entire React application, comparing multiple components, stuff like that, when it can run out of context, when Gemini CLI has a bigger context to analyze those things. Now that we are set up, let's go into planning mode. Hit Shift tab twice. This gets you into planning mode right here. Our plan for this application right now will be just to implement a button to export the data as CSV. This is a nice concise task that is small in scope. It does not need an extensive task list. So let's see how cloud code planning mode does. 
add an export button in the sort filter row this button should allow to export the data as a csv file so i can save it to my computer when we use plan mode like this it does not use gemini cli to analyze the code base and make an implementation plan which is why it's better for small tasks because you wouldn't have the bigger Gemini CLI context window. Okay, let's see. I'll add an export button to the research tracker component that allows users to download the filtered and sorted data as a CSV file. Here's what I'll imp implement. One, add export button to UI. So just as a placeholder, implement CSV export functionality. I'm curious how it will do this. Create a handle export CSV function. Great. CSV format details, that's nice. Include all visible fields. Implementation steps, add the export button, create the handler, connect the button click to trigger, to trigger the export, test with different filter and sort configurations. And here is one of the roadblocks that we run into that I don't really like. We can do yes, auto accept, yes, manually approve, or no, keep planning. I wish there was a more interactive way to save this to a file automatically, edit it, add sections, do something more interactive instead of having something concrete to work with. But for this case, let's just experiment and say yes and auto accept edits. Let's see what it comes up with. What's nice is this feature just requires purely client side changes and JavaScript built-in functionality. And let's see if we can see this change. Okay, so we do have a placeholder button. It looks terrible, white on white. I can't read what it says. So, and here's the lesson. This is something we could have added to the plan, right? That we wouldn't think to add. Make sure that the button text is readable. Like no human is really gonna make a button that is white text on super light gray background. We just take it as a given. But when vibe coding, you really have to be specific in, in what you want. It looks like we might be done and it's just testing, so let's test. Uh-huh. Okay, here we go. So it actually worked. Everything works. And that took us, I don't know, a minute less. That's fine. So we're gonna interrupt it. Just to note, we're out of planning mode now. We're just prompting cloud code. And what we can do actually is take a screenshot so I've given it a screenshot. Okay, so Claude is convinced that this button right here has wonderful high contrast. So let's go another way. Let's switch to using markdown files for planning. What I like to do is I like to find the button, which fortunately all of this is in one huge component. This would actually be a really good time to incorporate Playwright for UI testing in Cloud Code. For a video on how to use Playwright with Cloud Code, check it out. It's going to be right here. Let's just commit this. What we're going to do is say, analyze this component and export to CSV button. And I like to paste in the code. The blue background color is not working. Analyze why this could happen. Make a plan on how to fix this and put it in a markdown file, add file to our docs folder. Do not make any other code changes. It's created a comprehensive analysis document. Let's take a look. Okay, so the problem is specting a blue background, but the background is white. Conflict with default button styles. So you can, and you can always go deeper with this. You can make an implementation plan. You can make a dependency graph. You can make files per each task, which are all the things that I like to do for more complex projects. Check out this video for a workflow involving de dependency graphs, issue tracking, and other features on more complex issues when using markdown files for planning. But since this is a pretty simple issue, we're just going to use this one markdown file and it has a recommended implementation plan. So what we're gonna do is commit the plan, add this plan, just so we have it. And then I'm gonna say, read the plan, implement the steps, mark 
of implementing steps as they are completed. And another note, if we were working on a production level application, we would of course review this plan in more detail. For example, it's adding a specificity override being important, which is not acceptable in production. But since this is just a tutorial video, we're gonna let it slide. And I see, ooh, broke tailwind, fixed tailwind. Now I see that the styling has been partially broken. So now I see that it broke Tailwind. This happened because I did not check the implementation plan. So in a production environment, I would definitely be checking the implementation plan. And I think I know why this happened. This happened because it made changes to the way Tailwind is imported. So I'm gonna change it back. And here we go, our completed project with a nice export CSV button that works. To learn more about coding efficiently with Cloud Code, not hitting API limits, and making the best use of the tool, check out this next video.